Six cats on a journey together to learn how to unite and save the clans before their home is destroyed. Only through a life-changing journey will these cats learn to accept each other's differences and learn how to guide their fellow clanmates to their new home. Their friendship will be a beacon of light to follow, showing their fellow warriors that we aren't so different from each other. And peace is possible if we try to understand our neighbors. <laughs> yeah, right. This is new prophecy we're talking about. I have complicated feelings on Warriors the New Prophecy. On one hand, New Prophecy is a pretty strong follow-up to the original series. It follows the clans almost directly after Darkest Hour and focuses its attention on the semi-new cast of characters, most of whom are pretty enjoyable. Er, well, half of them are pretty enjoy- uh, They all have tiny bits of enjoyability, sometimes in certain circumstances. <clears throat> The first three books, which detailed the destruction of the forest and the clans finding a new home, are without a doubt the stronger part of the arc. I wouldn't be the first one to point out the mixed bag that is the second half, so I won't waste your time here nitpicking the finer details. What I would like to dive into instead is how I think New Prophecy could have lived up to its potential and better set up future Warrior series. New Prophecy is the groundwork for both Power of Three and Omen of the Stars, and it's tied to those series even stronger than the prophecies begin is. So its impact on those series has far-reaching consequences when something does or doesn't pay off. When Power of Three or Omen of the Stars fumbles, the start of that fall most likely began somewhere in New Prophecy. I've always leaned into the idea that even the worst stories can be enjoyable so long as you know how to tell it. And while New Prophecy is far from being a poorly told story, there are a few changes I think would make it better. So just think of this video as Tenille's adaptation of Warriors the New Prophecy and less like Tenille hates the New Prophecy. Because honestly, I still love these books for what they are, but who says that if a theoretical alternative adaptation of this particular series could exist, these would be some things I'd like to see. I'm merely offering my take on what my own version of this story might look like if I was a writer. The changes I would make to New Prophecy don't alter the overall story or major plot points, but they do alter the way the story is told. Starting off at the beginning with Midnight, we're introduced to Brambleclaw as our main protagonist as he learns about the prophecy and gathers the chosen cats together as they set off for their journey to find the sun-drowned place. This is a book about making friendships with others and Brambleclaw assuming his role as leader of the group of chosen cats. Leafpaw comes in as our second point of view protagonist and her story revolves around the clan going ons while the main cast is gone. An overall good book and a strong beginning to the arc but there are a few key changes I would make. For starters, I would like to see it follow Crowpaw's point of view rather than Brambleclaw or Leafpaw's. There's numerous reasons why I would make this change, but one of the biggest reasons would definitely be so that we get out of ThunderClan for this first book. Starting the book in any clan besides ThunderClan means that the authors have a better chance to introduce new readers to the world of Warrior Cats while not boring their old audience. New Prophecy is marked as its own series, with Midnight being the first book. As such, it should be possible to pick up this book and read it without prior knowledge of the last series. Using Crowpaw, an apprentice, means we can be introduced to the world and characters alongside Crowpaw, and it makes getting exposition to the audience easier while also offering something that longtime readers haven't seen, a perspective outside of ThunderClan. There's many other reasons I have for choosing Kropov for this first book, including the fact that he's the underdog of the group, he's the only cat chosen to go on the mission who still has his paw title, he has the most pressure put upon him by both Star Clan in the prologue and by his own clan to succeed and make something out of himself. This is especially something that can be built upon in the first act of the book. His actions have arguably the farthest reaching consequences for the next two series after this one, and probably the most important point is that he is the least likely to work with others while simultaneously being extremely serious about the prophecy. Crowpaw, and by extension Crowfeather, have the biggest character arc to go through in the beginning of the series, and love him or hate him, that arc needs to be addressed quickly or the whole group falls apart. 
Given the themes of cooperation and unity that this book tries to push, it makes sense to begin with a character who has the most troubles learning these lessons. Since his personality makes him so divisive, his personal journey in Midnight would be to learn to begrudgingly trust the other prophecy cats. The clans need to cooperate to survive, but if even Crowpaw can open up his heart to others, then maybe they stand a chance of convincing their clans to do the same. The main character's self-discovery being the thing that he needs to convince others of. Others who, most likely, contributed to his previous wrong opinions about how to handle problems. This same beginning couldn't be accomplished by any of the other prophecy cats. Brambleclaw, Squirrelpaw, Feathertail, Stormfur, and Tawnypelt all have some sort of past relationship or knowledge of each other, while Crowpaw does not. He's a complete stranger to each and every one of his companions. Squirrelpaw and Crowpaw are the only ones not introduced in the original series, but even Squirrelpaw has the advantage of being clanmates with Brambleclaw, who is probably the closest tied to all other cats, which is one of my biggest problems with Midnight as it stands now. Brambleclaw's point of view is limited by the fact that he already knows most of these cats, except for Crowpaw and Squirrelpaw, both of whom he finds irritating, and that position doesn't really change by the end of the book. Since Brambleclaw already knows everyone, it takes the fun out of introducing and developing most of these characters, and the ones that do get an introduction are unfortunately deemed right off the bat as annoying, a first impression that many fans keep throughout the series. Brambleclaw is often thinking to himself about how annoying Crowpaw is, and how he wished the prophecy had chosen someone different, aka someone more agreeable who doesn't challenge his leadership. Brambleclaw does slowly admit to himself that Crowpaw is important to their mission, but for a life-changing journey, the two barely interact or form a bond, which is troublesome considering the themes of the book. But honestly, why would they? From Brambleclaw's point of view, Crowpaw's friendship is optional and only his cooperation is necessary, which Brambleclaw does get begrudgingly. In fact, all of the clan cats sort of begrudgingly work together, which, while realistic, is not the most inspiring thing to read about. Call me corny, but when I first read New Prophecy, I was hoping to see a group of ragtag warriors who barely got along become best friends who worked out their differences and then all became badass super friends. After all, the big question after finishing this book is why did Star Clan send these cats all the way out here on this perilous journey if we just needed to know that their home was being destroyed and they need to find a new one? The answer to that question in the actual book is something along the lines of because you all needed to learn to work together, with also a vague hint that Star Clan didn't actually know why they were sending the cats, they only knew that Midnight the Badger knew what was really going on. The second reason seems to make a lot more sense to me, since I don't feel like this has been the life changing journey Star Clan was hoping it would be. By the end of Midnight, the six cats barely have any chemistry with each other, and the only characters that have any sort of arc are Squirrelpaw, Crowpaw, and Brambleclaw. Stormfur, Feathertail, and Tawnypelt barely say anything throughout the entire book, and while not completely devoid of personality, they do leave quite a bit to be desired. There is a swath of wasted writing potential when it comes to both Midnight and Moonrise of this arc. The prophecies begin never had cats from different clans journeying together, outside of that one time when Fireheart and Graystripe helped lead Wind Clan home, and that journey arguably leaves a stronger, more lasting effect on the cats involved than two whole books worth of journeying in New Prophecy. Of course, this is not just a problem in New Prophecy though, and it's one of the main reasons so many Warriors fans dislike traveling books, as they've come to be called. Because while a physical journey is made, rarely do we ever see any emotional or spiritual journey go along with it that has any lasting effect outside of its own book. In New Prophecy's case, it's even worse because the cats are literally on a spiritual journey where no spiritual knowledge is gained, be it knowledge of Star Clan, their faith in Star Clan, or faith in each other. Dawn does a much better job in this regard, but due to how poorly it's handled in the first two books, I wind up just feeling fatigued by the whole thing. Making sure that each book focuses on characters who have a personal journey to get through by the end of the book ensures that the books don't feel like filler, 
which is again why Kropa's point of view would be perfect for Midnight. Of course, there's more benefits to writing this book around Kropa, such as setting up future romances with Feathertail, Leafpool, and Nightcloud. At least letting them interact on some level and showing that there may be a spark there would definitely benefit the out-of-nowhere romances, especially considering how important Kropa's future love life is for the rest of the series. Spending extra time in Midnight to establish these relationships certainly wouldn't hurt. Obviously, Midnight would primarily focus on Kropa and Feathertail's relationship, hopefully fleshing Feathertail out more as her own character as well. Now, I know some of you might be wondering why I've cut Leafpool out of this first book, and some of you might be guessing it's because of my own complaints with Leafpaw as a character, but let me make my case here. Leafpaw's point of view in the first book is pointless. Starting with Midnight, Leafpaw's only purpose in the book is to witness Cinderpelt completely misread the Fire and Tiger prophecy, notice how beautiful Mothwing is, and telepathically communicate with Squirrelpaw a remedy for rat bites when Tawny Pelt gets bitten. Outside of that, Leafpaw is essentially a camera inside ThunderClan. None of Leafpaw's story in this book is relevant in the following books, and the Fire and Tiger prophecy was just a red herring to give Squirrelpaw and Brambleclaw some padded conflict in the first third of the book. The telepathic bond that Squirrelpaw and Leafpaw share is also something that the Urns seem to have run out of practical uses for after this book as well, so honestly, in my own version of New Prophecy, this superpower would just be scrapped along with Leafpaw's point of view in the first book. She would still keep her epilogue at the end though, where she finds that monsters have started coming into the forest. That's actually important. And Leafpaw does make a fine point of view character in Moonrise, However, I personally think that Mothwing would be even better. This would give us a chance to establish Hawkfrost and Mothwing's relationship and backstory while also detailing all of the politics going on in RiverClan after Mistyfoot is captured by Two Legs. And yes, I'm kind of moving events around here a little bit, but bear with me. All of the same important plot points would be seen from Mothwing's eyes, and honestly, Mothwing just has so much more interesting things going on for her as a character and plot-wise. We can even see how Mothwing views Leaf Pawn Her's relationship, which I think would be really cute. So yes, that means that for Moonrise, Stormfur and Mothwing would be the only point-of-view characters, making this book RiverClan-centric at its core the way that Midnight would have been WindClan-centric. Other than that, I wouldn't change much about Moonrise other than, again, more emphasis would be placed upon the bond the six cats share with each other, with Stormfur going through a mental crisis as he grapples with what loyalty truly means to him. What's more important, RiverClan, his friends, or the tribe? All of which he feels a personal and moral obligation to help. His own self-doubt could lead to a confrontation with Feathertail, asking her what she and Crowpaw plan to do once they return to RiverClan. Feathertail could help Stormfur realize his own love for the tribe and Brooke, but after Feathertail's death, he realizes that duty to RiverClan and his friends are more important for the time being, just like how Feathertail knew what she had to do, despite whatever vision she might have had for the future in either RiverClan or with Crowpaw. Now, Dawn is where I really kind of change things up, so, so stay with me. Tawny Pelt would be the main point of view in Dawn. Because of Tawny Pelt's no-nonsense attitude and her willpower to get things done, Tawny Pelt becomes the most active in trying to make sure that all the clans get the message that they need to leave their homes quickly. As a general rule, Brambleclaw, Squirrelpaw, Stormfur, Crowpaw, and Tawny Pelt pretty much ignore clan borders in order to communicate and fill each other in on what's going on and what kind of progress is being made. Stormfur and Crowpaw are distant and unreliable due to the loss of Feathertail and River Clan's volatile situation, however, and Tawny Pelt begins to get frustrated with the group as a whole and the friends have a falling out mid-book. They do recover as the clans themselves begin to realize that they need to leave, the rest of the book would mainly stay the same, just with Tawny Pelt witnessing the main events. Again, this would change Dawn to be a Shadow Clan centric book, which means that just leaves Starflight to be another Crowfeather book. Okay, okay, I know Thunder Clan hasn't gotten a book yet, but come on, 
Making Starlight not a Wind Clan centric book is asinine. It's ridiculous that a book all about Wind Clan civil war is told completely through Thunder Clan's eyes. I think this change is pretty self explanatory. We catch up with how Crowfeather is doing, we get all the details about the Wind Clan civil war, and start pushing the Leaf X Crow romance like the mess that it is. But since we have Crowfeather's perspective, it hopefully won't feel as out of nowhere, and this could easily also start to hint at the Crowfeather and Nightcloud situation as well. Changing this book's perspective to Crowfeather just kills so many birds with one stone and actually makes the narrative make more sense to me on every level. Another important thing to note is that Crowfeather, Brambleclaw, and Tawnypelt all still stay in touch. Brambleclaw has been making excuses for Squirrelflight not to be able to come, however, and Crowfeather gets suspicious of Brambleclaw's motives, especially due to ThunderClan's involvement in WindClan's affairs. This will help set up future trouble between Brambleclaw and Squirrelflight, as well as show the deterioration of the Traveling Cat's friendship, especially after losing Stormfur and Feathertail. The relationship between the Traveling Cats becomes so tense that the remaining three of them agree to stop having their meetings by the end of the book. That just leaves Twilight and Sunset, which really don't get too many changes in my own take of New Prophecy. Twilight will be from the perspective of Leafpool and Squirrelflight as they deal with their messy relationship problems, and finally, Brambleclaw will get Sunset all to himself. The hope I have here, by waiting to let Brambleclaw be a point of view character until the very end, is that it builds Brambleclaw up to be the mysterious will he, won't he be like his father that the books try to make him out to be. Throughout the series up to this point, the audience will have only had other characters' takes on him, and most certainly all of them will have thought or voiced their own fears of him being like Tigerstar. And given how reclusive and self-doubting Brambleclaw can be sometimes, his actions throughout the series would definitely be concerning at moments. Even Squirrelflight and Tawnypelt have their doubts, especially when Squirrelflight finds out that he's been getting closer to his half-brother Hawkfrost. When you then open Sunset and you find out that Brambleclaw has been training with Tigerstar and Hawkfrost in the Dark Forest, it feels like all of your suspicions have been confirmed that Brambleclaw is up to no good. Of course, throughout the course of the book, Brambleclaw will prove that he isn't Tigerstar's pawn, and the series would end with the same awesome fight between Brambleclaw and Hawkfrost by the lake. Now, I said I wouldn't change any important plot points, so Firestar would make Brambleclaw his deputy after all of this was said and done. I'd honestly prefer if Brambleclaw remained a warrior and realized his ambition had blinded him. Then Squirrelflight and him could make up with each other without the help of Leafpool, and maybe sometime in Power of Three or Omen of the Stars, Brambleclaw could have earned his deputy position anyway. But, like I said, no major story changes, so it all plays out the same way in the book. The only final change I'd make is that at the end of Sunset, Tawnypelt, Brambleclaw, Squirrelflight, and Crowfeather would all get together to discuss where they go from here. Most of them agree that their meeting should come to an end, saying that loyalty to their clans is now more important than ever. Squirrelflight hissed. Her tone wasn't menacing, but almost pleading. Separate? Us? But we've gone through so much. All of this. By sticking together. Her fluffy tail wrapped around her short legs, as though trying to comfort herself from the idea of them being distant from one another. Brambleclaw felt a chill crawl up his spine. In his heart, he wanted to agree with her, but he knew that these meetings had to end. Crowfeather refused to look any of them in the eye. The lean warrior looked uncomfortable just being there. Tawnypelt sighed and stepped closer to Squirrelflight, wrapping her long tail along her back. Even though the jester was kind, Brambleclaw couldn't help but feel slightly unnerved by it, which made him realize how far apart they'd truly grown now that the clans were settling into their new territories. I know, she mewed. But the clans were never meant to be one. Our meetings now stand against the warrior code. We've done what Star Clan wanted. We should have went our separate ways right after we got here. Crowfeather's voice was laced with bitterness. It was the first thing he said all night. Brimclaw felt an uncomfortable surge of pity for the warrior. He knew they were all thinking of Leafpool. Would their unfortunate affair have been avoided if the clans hadn't become so close after the journey to their new territory? Wind Clan's war might have been avoidable if we had, Tawny Pelt agreed, trying to redirect their thoughts. And I might not have been fooled by Hawkfrost if I'd been more focused on staying loyal to ThunderClan. 
Ravenclaw knew his affiliation with Hawkfrost wasn't any of his companions' fault except his own, but it still left him feeling uneasy. The four remained silent. A chill night breeze ruffled their fur as the trees above swayed, seemingly pushing them along. Give us a moment, Brimbleclaw thought. The goodbye hanging between them was like the moment before eating sour traveling herbs. No one wanted to take the first bite. Brimbleclaw knew he wasn't saying goodbye to these cats forever. It wasn't as painful as saying goodbye to Stormfur, or, his heart ached at the thought, saying goodbye to Feathertail. But after today, any meeting with these cats, his companions, wouldn't be the same. Crowfeather took the first bite. Goodbye, was all he said before turning away briskly and racing across the tree bridge and back onto WindClan territory. He didn't look back. Tawny Pelt ruffled her fur and locked gazes with Brambleclaw. I'm glad I got to know my brother better. Her green gaze traveled down to Squirrel Flight, and a small smile crossed her face. Take care. Then Tawny Pelt left without another word, barely making a sound as she also left the island. I guess that's it then? Squirrel Flight asked once her and Brambleclaw were alone. Brambleclaw scooted closer to Squirrel Flight. At least they still had each other. Squirrel Flight pressed her muzzle into his thick fur and sighed. After a short while, they started towards ThunderClan territory together. You know, Brambleclaw said after a bit of walking, Squirrel Flight turned her head to look at him, her green eyes questioning. We may never be as close to each other as we used to be. Thanks, that's really comforting, Brambleclaw. Sarcasm edged Squirrel Flight's voice. Let me finish, he grumbled. We may not be as close as we once were, but I know that because of us, we've brought the clans closer together, and that'll save our clanmates in the long run. Brambleclaw hoped to see Squirrel Flight looked reassured by his words, but her face remained contemplative. He continued, We've got each other's backs. We'll have our border disputes and disagreements, but at the end of the day, the clans will stand by each other when it really matters. Squirrel Flight shot him a warm smile, then rolled her eyes. No wonder my father chose you to be deputy. You're starting to sound just like him. Her big red tail twined over his lovingly, and Brambleclaw felt a purr rise in his throat. As they continued to pad along the border of the lake, Brambleclaw felt confident in his own words. He truly believed that they'd brought something special to the clans, even if this peace didn't last forever. They would always have to be diligent for cats like Hawkfrost, who wanted to use other cats' friendliness to serve themselves. But now that his half-brother was gone, Brambleclaw hoped to lead the clans into moons of peace. Together. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to tell me your thoughts on the new prophecy and what you think of my changes. What would you guys change if you had the time to rewrite these books? I tried to keep most of my changes so that I wouldn't have to change anything in Power of Three or Omen of the Stars or any of the series that come after that, just to make the changes easier to comprehend and just to prove my point that a story can be told in many different ways and one way might be better than another. It all just kind of depends on what you're doing. If you liked this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. If you want more videos like this, be sure to check out my Patreon. Videos like these take a lot of time to do. Obviously, I did something a little bit different this time just to help bring the video out to you guys faster. If you liked my print, you can check out my Redbubble where you can order it on a multitude of different things. Most of all, a poster, which would be cool hanging up on your wall. Until next time, I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Bye-bye!